this video is going to be about modeling equations and inequalities. So we're going to be drawing pictures to represent the variables and the constant. Um, we are in our journal. We're starting unit three. If you're in my class, this is starting on page 28. Um, at the top, we've got some information that we can go over. Um, a variable, that's a letter or an unknown amount. So I'm going to highlight that because we need to know what is a variable. Variables are the letters. Then the constant numbers, um, that is an amount that never changes. It's a number without a letter. Okay, so I might add that. not with a letter. A constant number is a number that does not have the letter with it. Um, so a couple different things on how do you draw a picture of an equation. So you can either choose two different shapes. One would represent the variable and the other one would represent the constant. One's gonna represent the variable. Pick something else to represent your constant. Um, so it's up to you unless the directions tell you. So you might use rectangles and squares. Um, this might be too close. Sometimes squares look like rectangles or rectangles look like squares. Um, triangles and circles or maybe rectangles and triangles or squares and circles could be a way to put those together. The second thing to think about is we have to have a different way to represent a positive and a negative number. So possibly you might want to shade your positive numbers maybe not shade your negative numbers. This could be flipped back and forth. Um, you might wanna put a plus sign in all, inside the shapes for your positive numbers and a minus sign inside your shapes for your negative numbers. So here's two different ways. Um, in this one, we have a rectangle and a square. This rectangle is representing the variable. The squares are representing the constant numbers. This number does not have a letter with it, so that's called a constant. I'm gonna write that in. These two numbers are called constants. And then this little x is the letter, so that's called my variable. In the second example, they chose different shapes. These are cups, and these are circles or ping pong balls, whatever you want to call those, some circles or spheres. And again, identifying um, which one, the three X is the variable, and then the plus four and the 13, these numbers are both constants. So now we're gonna draw um, a couple different equations just to get the some practice. This says three X minus seven equals five. So um, I'm going to separate or identify the differences between the variables and the constants. So I have, oh, you can't see that very good. 3x is a variable. And up here at the top, it says draw the models using these symbols. So this time we have a key. It says a positive variable is going to be a rectangle that's not shaded in. A negative variable will be a rectangle that is shaded in. So we're going to be using rectangles and circles, and then we'll have shaded and not shaded. Uh, up here at the top, these two things are going to be variables. Whoops. And then um, the circles, these are going to be my constant numbers. Okay, I'm going to draw a line to represent my equal sign. Okay, three X was the positive variable. And again, it said to use a rectangle that's not shaded in. Then my next number, it says negative seven or subtract seven. So the way for me to show that um, the constant numbers These are both my constants. They're both positive, and the constant number should be a circle, and positive is not colored in. 
negative is colored in or subtract is colored in. So because this one was a subtract seven, I need to shade it in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it said, if it's a subtract or a negative number, then shade in the symbols. Okay, then we have the equal sign and then we have positive five. So I have the equal sign in my um, drawing. Then positive five would just be an open circle that's not shaded in. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm finished. The three X would be for my rectangles, minus seven because they're shaded in, and then positive five because they're not shaded in um, circles. Okay, next question underneath, it says six minus two X equals negative four. So I'm going to, again, draw the line for where my equal sign goes. Um, my variables this time, this says minus two X for the variable. So when I draw those, I need to shade them in. shade in these two rectangles because they were minus or they're supposed to be represented in a negative way. Then the six is a constant number. It's a positive. So I will just represent that with six circles that are not shaded in. This positive four, I mean the negative four it is a circle, however, because it's negative, it needs to be shaded in. And then you're done. Okay, now we're going to move on to inequalities. The inequalities are on page 30 in your journal. And an inequality, the only difference in an inequality is the symbol. So we have a greater than sign, we have a greater than or equal to sign, then we have a less than sign or a less than or equal to sign. When you read one of these inequality statements, you say the letter, then you read um, the sign. So this would just be R is less than seven. You're always comparing the left side to the right side when you read it. So this sentence would basically mean any number less than seven would be true for this inequality. This says K is greater than negative three. This says F is less than or equal to negative five. This says Y is greater than or equal to eight. So underneath we have a table version. Verbally we just read it. Symbolically is when we use the variables and the symbols. Then a graph is when you have a number on a number line, you have an open or a closed circle, and then an arrow showing which direction all the answers would be um, possible. So the thing we want to look at on here, if it's just less than, you have an open circle. And I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to write open circle. You can also look at it in um, the graph. You just draw the circle above the number. If it's just greater than, again, you have the open circle. So there's not, two would not be part of the answer. But then if it says less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, this is when um, we would do a closed circle. And again, if it says or equal to, you have a closed circle. So you're looking for if there is the extra line under the symbol or not the extra line under the symbol. If there is an extra line under the symbol, you do shade in the circle. If there's not an extra line under the circle, you don't color in. Okay, let's try a few on our own. I'm going to zoom in so it's a little bit easier for me to write the features that we need. 
the first thing we need to look at is the symbol. This is less than. If it's only less than, then that means I'm going to shade to the left. And because it's only less than, um, that tells me that I will have an open circle on seven. So draw my open circle on seven, and then I would shade to the left all the way to the end of the number line and put an arrow on the end to let me know that it's gonna keep going forever in that direction. The next one, I'm gonna look at my symbol. It says greater than, so what I know for sure because it says greater than, I'm gonna shade. It should be shaded to the right. Larger numbers go to the right. And because it's only greater than, I would do an open circle. An open circle on negative three. So I come to negative three, draw the open circle, and then I would shade to the right and switch to highlighter. Shade to the right and put an arrow on the end so that I show it keeps going forever in that direction. Okay, the third one on the page, it says less than or equal to. If it's less than or equal to, that tells me I'm going to shade. It should be shaded to the left. Less than makes left. And because it has that equal to sign, it should be a closed circle. And it would be on negative five. So draw a circle on negative five, shade it in. And then on my number line, it says go to the left because I want the numbers that are less than negative five. Put an arrow on the end to show that it goes forever in that direction. Then the last question, it says y is greater than or equal to positive 2. So again, my first thing is look at my symbol because that's going to tell me all my information. If it's greater than, that means I'm going to be shaded to the right. Greater numbers are to the right. And then because it also has that open, I mean the line underneath it, I would do a closed circle and it's on positive two. Closed circle on positive two. So go draw the circle on two, shade it in. And then because it says greater than, I'm gonna be shading to the right. Greater numbers go to the right and put an arrow on the end of my line.